Alright guys and welcome to another video. Today we're having a more detailed look at the Retribution Paladin of Wrath Classic. A little more detail than my previous Paladin video that you can also check out that gives an overview of all the different specs. So today what we're going to cover is first of all I'll give you a little bit of an introduction and the cold hard truths about playing a Paladin, answering all the frequently asked questions that are being asked constantly now in the community. Talk about new spells and talents, but also their key changes from TBC into Classic. We'll talk about the major important glyphs that you're going to be looking at. And then obviously, lastly, we'll talk about the playstyle, give you a bit of an insight into, you know, how it actually plays and whether you're going to find it fun or not. But remember guys, this isn't a detailed end game raiding guide or anything of the sort. It's just more of a detailed overview of the class to help you decide whether you want to play it or not. Before we jump in guys, if you're looking to level a Rep Paladin now in preparation for Wrath Lich King and for when Wrath Lich King does launch, you want to check out the guides over at Rested XP. They're made by the best world record holding speedrunners in the game. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. So the big thing that everyone's wondering, the biggest question is, well, is the Rep Paladin actually any good now, finally? Not saying that they were bad in TBC or anything, but obviously they were slow out the gate. Well, they are ludicrously better in Wrath of Lich King, however, there's a little bit of a catch. The simple cold hard truth is a Rep Paladin is more of a middle of the pack support DPS. They're not a class that's going to be stacked, like you won't find more than one, but you might do later on in Ice Crown Citadel. However, Paladin will absolutely demolish the meters on the Clue fights and trash packs in your raid, and they're absolutely insane for farming heroics. And when it comes to raids, they're going to absolutely pump on bosses like Noth and Anubarak in Naxxramas, and Razigor, Freya, and Kologran in Ulduar. There are people out there saying, oh, Red DPS sucks until Ice Crown Citadel, but to be honest, it's a trap. Don't, don't listen to stuff like that. Because on quite a few fights, you know, in the first few phases, like I said, they will do insane damage. Don't be a knobhead, guys, and listen to these sad, tryharding, min maxing guys who donate money to Amaranth and live alone with a cat. Play a Rep Paladin. It absolutely pumps, and it's great, and it's fun to play. The reason people say that it starts to get much more powerful in Ice Crown Citadel is because of a two-set bonus for Tier 10, as a chance to reset the cooldown of Divine Storm on your melee hits. And this is a very, 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 very powerful power spike for the Rep Paladin, and pushes them to be a top tier DPS in all the fights in Ice Crown Citadel, even on single target fights. Another called hard truth is that for progression raiding, your raid leader might force you to off-spec into protection for Divine Sacrifice. This ability gives 20% damage reduction for 6 seconds for everyone within 30 hours, so it's a very powerful raid cooldown. But you will lose a little bit of your DPS because you won't be able to pick up the seals of a pure talent for 15% extra seal and judgement damage. Personally, I don't think it's absolutely necessary to get this ability unless you do in order our hard modes. But what you can do is you can dual spec two different ret specs, one for maximum DPS on the easier fights, and then get Divine Sacrifice for the fights that your raid leader deems essential. And now, the last cord hard truth is you're not going to get gear priority, because the Death Knights are going to steal all of the plate gear and all the two-handed weapons before you do. Because Death Knights just simply do more damage and actually provide also some really useful raid buffs and debuffs. And if you have a raid group with a Blood DK tank, two DKA DPS slots, yeah, then you're in a bit for a bit of a rough time there, because it's going to take you a while before you get to see any two-handed weapons from Nax. It's probably worth doing a cheeky Nax Ramus 10 pug to rely on the RNG gods for a good two-hander. Now let's go through all of the new spells, the new spell changes, and lastly we'll finish with a talent. So first of all, we obviously have the ability we've all been waiting for, Divine Storm. What it does is it deals 110% weapon damage to everyone within 8 yards, effects up to four targets. It's your big, pumping, juicy, extremely satisfying cleave ability, and it also does a little bit of healing for the melee, since it will actually heal up to three party members for 25% of the total damage done. Your next big cleave ability, Seal of Command, has been totally reworked in Wrath. So what happens is, like, like usual, it's not based on weapon damage anymore. When you deal damage, it will do extra holy damage. However, if you use Judgment, and Crusader Strike, that holy damage 
will also be duplicated to two additional targets. It doesn't duplicate the Judgment or Crusader Strike damage, it just duplicates the Seal damage. Seal of Vengeance will now be your main single target seal. Seal of Blood and Seal of Martyr have been removed, but its effects have been combined into Seal of Vengeance. So it's exactly how it was before. You know, you stack it five times, but when you stack it five times, then you start to deal extra damage, 33% of your actual weapon damage. Which also means it's not really worth swapping to a different seal once you've got this stacked up five times, because just staying in Seal of Vengeance is going to do more damage. Sometimes you will swap into Seal of Righteousness when you have to swap to enemies that have smaller health pools. We also now have unique judgments, so you have Judgment of Wisdom, Judgment of Light, and Judgment of Justice. The main ones you're going to be using is Judgment of Wisdom or Judgment of Light, and they have basically the same effects as they did in TBC. But now you no longer have to get Seal of Wisdom or ever use a Judgment, you can just use a Judgment of Wisdom or Light, even when you have Seal of Command or Seal of Vengeance up. It's also important to note that seals are now actual buffs, so they won't be consumed when you use a judgement, you just use judgement and the seal just stays up. Holy Wrath has now been changed to an instant cast, which is very nice, and it will also affect all kinds of targets but just do crit damage to undead. For exorcism it's the opposite, it is actually now a casted ability, but with a certain talent, which has a chance to proc off your melee attacks, it will turn it into an instant cast and again it will do now crit damage to undead and will also affect all targets. Avenging Wrath has been changed slightly so it's been nerfed from 30% to 20% but it will also affect healing plus you can use other abilities like Divine Shield within 30 seconds and not one minute. It may seem like a bit of a nerf but it, it really, well it is but it also isn't just because other abilities more than make up for this nerf. Hand of Salvation and Hand of Sacrifice have also been changed to be more cooldown support abilities, so it will reduce the total threat by 2% every 1 second for 10 seconds, so it's a big like threat drop ability that you can pop on anyone, or obviously yourself. And Hand of Sacrifice will transfer 30% of the damage taken by the target to the caster and it lasts 12 seconds until 100% of their maximum health has been transferred, so this is a great little utility to help out the tanks when they need it, but obviously it's kind of risky because you can obviously kill yourself, but if you're intelligent about how you use it, you, you shouldn't. You should be able to pop a hand of sacrifice and then use your out of war procs to pop your health back up with some cheeky flash of lights, or even just pop a divine shield. But as you can probably imagine, this is just great in PvP. We also have the ability Sacred Shield, it's not a wholly specific ability, every spec can get it. It absorbs 500 damage, and obviously increase the chance for you to gain flash of light crits by 50% for 6 seconds. And the last new ability is Divine Plea, you gain 25% of your total mana over 15 seconds, but you might heal by a flash of light and basically all your healing abilities reduced by 50%. You honestly won't use this that much, because there's another talent that makes mana regeneration totally redundant, we'll talk more about that in a second. So now let's look at the big talent changes. First thing you're going to notice is, is Sanctuary Aura has been totally removed. Now you've got Sanctified Retribution increases your damage caused by Red Aura by 50% and all damage caused by friendly targets affected by any of your auras is increased by 3%. So that effect is basically transferred into this talent. We now have the proccing talent called Art of War. What it does is your melee critical hits will make your next Flash of Light or Exorcism spell a total instant cast. So Exorcism is actually a cast ability now in Wrath. But with this cheeky talent, it won't be. It's why Crit is a very, very valuable talent for the Red Paladin. Now, Judgment of a Wise will replace Sanctified Judgments. What it does is refunds 25% of your base mana whenever you pop a judgment, but will also cause a regeneration effect that regenerates 1% of maximum mana per 5 seconds, and this will be affected on every single raid member. Well, technically it is only 10 people that it will affect. The Divine Purpose talent is totally gone, we now have Sanctified Wrath increases the crit chance of Hammer Wrath by 50%, reduces the cooldown of Avenging Wrath by 60 seconds, and while affected by Avenging Wrath, 50% of all damage caused bypasses damage reduction effects. So that's very useful for PvP. And it also makes Hammer Wrath actually worth using now. Here's a new talent, Sheaf of Light. Increases your spell power by 30% of your attack power. 
and your critical healing spells heal the target with 60% of a healed amount over 12 seconds. What this does is just drastically boosts your healing. Swift Retribution, your auras also increase casting range and melee attack speeds by 3%. Righteous Defense, basically your abilities, when they deal a crit, will also deal 30% of the additional damage over 8 seconds. Again, another talent that makes crit valuable for a rep paladin. And when it comes to off-specking, as you can see, Divine Strength has been moved to the Protection Tree, and then the Precision talent in the Protection Tree has been totally removed. We also have Seal of the Pure, which replaces the Seal of Righteousness talent, increase the damage done by Seal of Righteousness, Seal of Vengeance, Seal of Corruption, everything basically, and their judgments by 15%. This is your optimal damage build. You spec down into Aura Mastery, which is a you know another good raid cooldown that you can use. But your raid leader might force you to spec differently, where you have to sacrifice the talents put in holy, and you go down the tree to pick up this ability called Divine Sacrifice, like I mentioned earlier. And another way to spec, although this is a very selfless way to spec, is you sacrifice your points and pursuits of justice, because that is just a simple movement speed effect. It's technically only 7% better than the movement speed boot enchant, but anyway, to get points and improve lay of hands for that 20% reduced physical damage for 15 seconds if you want to support the tanks with that. Now let's take a little look at the notable glyphs, first of all you got glyph of judgement, bit of a boring one, increases your judgement damage by 10%, absolutely mandatory, you never opt for anything different than this, this will always be permanently in your glyph book. The seal of vengeance glyph, or obviously the seal of corruption glyph for the horde, permanently grants 10 expertise while it's active. Again, you will not remove this from your glyph book either, because it is that, you know, useful, getting that much expertise from a little glyph and not having to actually have it on your gear. However, when you get the Glorenzelg two-handed sword, which is a best-in-slot sword, it also has expertise on it, so then it makes this talent, sorry, this glyph redundant. But most of the time you will have this as well. Another mandatory glyph is your Glyph of Sense Undead, it's a very simple 1% extra damage, why have Sense Undead active, so make sure you always have it active. That's just free damage. Now for the more optional glyphs and situational glyphs. First of all, Glyph of Exorcism increases its damage by 20%, obviously a big boost to your single target DPS. We've also got Glyph of Consecration, increase of the duration and cooldown of Consecration by 2%. This is a, well, it's normally a boost to your AoE DPS. Some paladins also like to go with Seal of Righteousness for judgement nuking. Basically, you switch a Seal of Righteousness sometimes when you're switching to enemies that have low health, and it can provide a little bit of extra damage. Now, let's talk about the playstyle. Is it actually fun to play? Is it one of those more boring rotations? Does it actually have a little level of complexity to it? Well, the Retribution Paladin is an extremely fast-paced priority system. You've got to react very quickly to abilities coming off cooldown, procs becoming available, and obviously that tier bonus for tier 10 resetting the cooldown of Divine Storm. If you don't react fast enough and use an ability lower in this priority order, when a different ability becomes available, you will lose DPS. So you've got to be extremely precise and aware of when everything's coming off cooldown. Obviously, weak horrors will probably help with this massively. When you don't have that set bonus, the priority is Judgment of Light, Hammer of Wrath, Crusader Strike, Divine Storm, Consecration, and then Exorcism, and then Holy Wrath if you can squeeze it in. But normally you only bother with Holy Wrath when there's multiple enemies. But when you do have that set bonus, it's Judgment of Light, then Divine Storm. Divine Storm is a higher priority because you need to use it when it becomes refreshed as soon as possible, otherwise you're, you're wasting it. You need to put it on cooldown as soon as possible and as often as you can. Then Hammer, Wrath, Crusader Strike, Consecration, and Exorcism. For AoE situations, you begin to prioritise your cleave abilities over your single target abilities. But when there's many mobs, Holy Wrath becomes an even bigger priority, you know, when you've got like 10 or plus mobs. Another way that it's similar to the Frost Death Knight is, it's easy to pick up and understand, but more difficult to master in its execution if you really want to min-max and optimise your DPS. Because again, you have to mash buttons and react very quickly in order to absolutely perfect your rotation, because there isn't just like a rotation that you can cast, like do this and then that and then back to that. It It's changing constantly depending on the little mini durations of every single cooldown. Abilities, there's basically never going to be the same order start to finish in a, in a single fight. Everything's just going to be a mash of different orders and different cycles. But as long as you keep to this priority list, you should do the most damage that you can do. 
Personally, I've always loved playing a Rat Paladin, very fast paced, very exciting, the cleave damage is extremely satisfying and very fun, you've also got great support, there's a number of clutch plays that you can make to prevent raid wipes, and just helping out overall, which always feels pretty satisfying, when knowing that you've prevented a raid wipe. And again guys, don't don't listen to these weirdos who say that Rat Paladin is bad in Wrath, it, it, it just, it isn't, okay? Anyway, my name is Goblin. to my next video, ciao.